on this episode, we have a very normal reaction to things not working. Didn't work. But this is a family-friendly show. I hope you appreciate how much restraint I'm showing here, okay? However, when things work, our joy may be unrestrained. This is amazing! Hmm. Hi everybody, this is Christian from Lazy Devs and welcome to uh, the Advanced Web Tutorial. We're working on our schedule editor called Skedit. And we added some a timeline, a bit of a timeline so we can kind of see exactly when things are spawning because we did. I don't trust what I see on the screen. It's the enemies are gonna be flying, it's gonna be really chaotic. I wanna see the actual data underneath. Uh, and today we're gonna make that timeline be a bit more useful right now. It's a bit of a useless thing. Um, useless in the sense that it doesn't have, it does, it's not interactive anyway. Um, there's, before we do, there's something that bugs me and I want to fix it right away. I don't like the, the dash, the, I don't like how the dash like touches the, the, the black box on the left side and I don't like the gap between the dash and uh, the rest. So let me, let me fix, let, I'm, I'm, I know I'm a stickler for this, but it, you know, sometimes things have to be also pretty, right? I think sometimes you have to make things pretty in order to, to like, to, to make it delightful to interact with them. <laughs> It's my explanation to things. Um, right, so we're gonna have to do like two print statements here. Uh, what, what did I do? What did I do? Here, timeline. Uh, so we're gonna do two print statements. Uh, we're not gonna draw the dash in the upper print statement and in the second print statement, we're gonna draw the dash, but we're gonna like, we're gonna fine tune the exposition of that dash. Uh, I, I knew it, I broke, oh yeah, no, it's just the two dots. We have to remove the two dots. Okay, good. Uh, I, now I don't see a dash at all anymore. Oh, it is, I think it's too, too far, too far to the right. Like so many things today. <laughs> uh, oh, 20 is actually pretty good, uh, but we want it to be 21. See, ah, now, now that's a really nice dash. It is really good placement. Uh, and also now I want to um, start drawing um, the uh, the actual enemy enemy indicators. I want to draw them uh, a bit further to the left. So that's going to be here. Yeah, that's going to be here. Uh, so right now we're doing a bit of a hack here. Uh, let me let me print it. Let me just print it correctly. Um, then we're gonna print it at 21, but actually like 25 or something, right? Yes, see, now, see now, now that's a bit of a better placement, but I think we should draw it at like 26. 26. Yes, 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 this is good. I'm, a, I'm still a bit of a stickler. I, I cannot stop being a stickler to those things. So I want actually the spacing of the enemies here. I want them to match our, our actual buttons. So in order to that, we need even more print statements, but that might also maybe simplify our, our thing. So the way I'm thinking is I'm gonna take the individual, like we're gonna print each individual uh, number for uh, that is associated with an enemy. We're gonna print it individually. So we're gonna do something like this. And we're not, we don't need. This. Uh, I made a mistake, um, but it's okay. We're gonna fix this here. Um, we're gonna make sure it's double digits. Yes, this is good. Um, the problem is now when we draw it like this, uh, we haven't closed it too strong. There's a thing missing, okay. Um, so now, you, ooh, that's that's very bad. That's not, not what we wanted. Uh, Oh, there's a, oh, we, you're, oh, dang. Okay, so we, <laughs> we're using an I iterator inside an I iterator. Yikes, that sh should not happen. That should not happen. Um, and then, oh, yeah. I'm kind of shocked that it worked somehow. Uh, we remained the I into a J, now it works. Um, but spacing is a little bit off. Well, the, sp the placement of the, 
of the buttons is off. Let's let's fix the buttons. Um, so we need to go. When we're doing the buttons here, 28, we need to put it to 26. Maybe we have to move all the buttons a little bit to the left. Yeah, see, now we're getting somewhere. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, see, this is looking a lot more nice. And then <laughs> this is why UI takes a lot of time because I am <laughs> like stick to these guys' little details. Um, but there's a bit of a problem here. You can see like these are, there are two enemy spawns here, right? But if I scroll down, I see only one in a timeline when I don't have that timeline selected. And that is because we are all drawing all of the enemies on top of each other. We ac actually have to do like a system that we did here where we uh, advance things. And, and you know, this we could calculate this from, uh, from the J, but we also can <laughs> use this solution here. I think that's a little bit more, uh, that, that's also a solution. <laughs> um, your X plus equal, um, what is the spacing? That's always 10. So let's do the spacing 10 here. Um, yeah, let's try that. Okay, you see now there, there's two spawns next to each other and they match the buttons when we select them. So that's what we want. Yeah, this looks, this looks neater. This looks neater. Yeah, and it's also kind of like we're not breaking the bank in terms of performance. So we have highly inefficient um, code underneath because you saw that, right? Every single line in this UI, in this timeline, every single line, we loop through an entire enemy list, through the entire spawn list. Now our spawn list is not that big, so maybe that's not a big deal, but um, yeah, if we're ever gonna get like a very, very large spawn list, then we might need to actually make sure that we're looking up the enemies a bit more in an efficient way. But for now, that's that's um, that's that's a future Christian problem. <laughs> so I want to now make the buttons work. First, I want to make them work with the actual um, button presses. But later on, something that we're gonna do, we're gonna use the mouse as well. Yeah. So for this UI, we're gonna actually use a, a two-pronged approach. We're gonna give the ability to do a lot of stuff with a, with that keyboard, but we also give some mouse control as well, so we can do both things at the same time. This will be a bit of more work, but I think it will pay off in the end. I hope so. Here are the buttons that we're creating. Um, this is the enemy button. We're gonna talk, think about the enemy button later on, but the one that I'm interested in is, is this here. I'm gonna call it add n. Uh, this adds an enemy, and then we're gonna go to the update function here. Um, so now we want to actually react to button presses. So let's get this. Um, right. So if we press X, uh, we're gonna get the menu, and then we're gonna get the command of the menu. <clears throat> and if that's add n, then like this, okay? So there is a command that we're executing, and if we're executing that command, um, we're gonna, well, basically we're gonna spawn a new enemy. We're kind of already doing that, right? We have this, this thing, if we click, we're gonna spawn an enemy. We actually make this go away now. And instead we're gonna enter this. And like this. So we now we can no longer spawn enemies by clicking, but we have to use this plus button. But that's actually good because this gives us the ability to spawn an enemy exactly at a certain scroll value. And, and um, so it's gonna be an enemy number one. We have to find a way to change the enemy type, but that's coming up later on. And now the position is a bit weird um, because we are using the keyboard to spawn things. So it's not necessarily, um, so we don't have a position. So let's go like, let's spawn it like 64 and like eight. So it spawns at the top of the screen and we can nudge it in the position that we want it to be. Um, so yeah, let's try that. So you see, I'm gonna create an enemy and there it is. There is an enemy and you can see it on the top, right? Let, let's try, try it again. There, I created an enemy there. I can create multiple enemies now, but obviously they're all on top of each other. So that doesn't really help us.
But that's good. That's good. Now, it, it, this was a bit of a you know anticlimactic. We didn't respawn we spawning enemies, but we cannot move them. We cannot interact with them in any way. And also, maybe there's a bit of a problem where if I have these enemies here and I'm like I don't know which enemies these are. Like I don't see any indicator showing me which button this enemy, which enemy this button corresponds to. So we're gonna have to deal with that in a, in a second here. But first of all, I also want now the mouse. I want to be able to use the mouse to select different buttons, and that's gonna be a new challenge. So we're gonna add it here after button presses. We're gonna add a mouse control, mouse button. Control and look if you want to abbreviate the mouse the, the, the word button by leaving off the two the last two characters you you do you I'm not going doing that this is a family friendly show <laughs> okay so we're gonna just loop through all of the buttons and we're gonna check with each button if that button is underneath the mouse so we're gonna go for um, be in in all menu do right and we're gonna say like if um now we need to collide a button with a mouse that's kind of weird um let's call this uh, mouse call let's go just with mouse call b we're gonna create a function called mouse call we're gonna figure out later how that works then see ah hmm, we cannot quite do that we have to actually do a for next loop because the buttons don't know which index they are and we kind of want to set cur x. Ultimately, we want to like have a mouse over thing, right? We want to be able to move with the mouse over a button and then click. Uh, so when a mouse hovers over a button, I want to actually select that button. Um, and so we need to change cur x and cur y. But if the button doesn't know which cur x and y it, it corresponds to, then we cannot change those, right? It, eventually, we're going to have cur x and cur y equals <laughs> something, right? That's, that's, that's the thing that should happen in this if statement. But with this uh, um, b in all, we cannot do that. And so instead, we're going to use for um, mx uh, equals 0 to hashtag menu do. And then for my equals 0 to, oh, actually, that's, that's my, that's an x. I think, is it? Yeah, 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 that's it. And then we're gonna do a menu m y do. And this is a bit overkill because uh, and currently we only have one line in our menu, but we might have multiple lines later on. So I wanna make like a robot system for mouse interaction so we can use that system, reuse that system and maybe other menus, or we can expand our menu to have multiple buttons everywhere on the screen. Okay, so like this, and then we're gonna go if mouse call menu, my x then uh, cur x equals and now we can go mx my that's the way it's supposed to work okay so now the only thing that's left to do is we have to figure out this mouse call where we collide um, the mouse with a with a with a button on the screen um, let's put it in tools everything is tools now. <laughs> Uh, mouse call B. Um, I mean, it's a it's collision detection. It's we already had that before. Um, so we're gonna go if um, what is the mouse position? How do we calculate? So this is like mouse X. Uh, I forgot the names of the yeah. It's mouse X and mouse Y. Okay, so we're gonna go if um, mouse X is smaller than B dot X then return false. If mouse y is smaller than by, then so if the mouse is on the left to the left of the button or above the button, then we know there is no collision and then otherwise return true. But this is going to be a bit wrong, but we're going to, it will give us some results, right? Mm. Hashtag. Oh, we're starting at zero. Oops. Right, let's go to somewhere where we have multiple buttons. 
Yeah, see, we almost can do it. We can almost do it. Oh no, actually, it doesn't quite work because um, we're gonna get we are getting collisions with the buttons uh, here. Uh, but that makes sense because we uh, this is an incomplete collision. We also have to calculate now the width and the height of a button, and we want to make sure that the, there is no collision if the mouse is on the right side of the right edge of the button. So if the mouse is greater than the x collision, uh, the x position plus the width, we have to calculate the width. Or uh, and if mouse y is is greater than the y position, then h g t. Okay, so now we have to we have to calculate those. So we're gonna go local h h g t equals height is like the a character is five in height uh, plus. Two. So that's going to be seven. Sate is height is always going to be seven. So we actually can type in seven here already. Uh, but minus one, right? Because it's yeah, yeah. So it should be six. Let's try six. Um, but width is going to be local width equals. So that's going to be. Hmm, we have to take. Uh, there's a width on on the buttons, right? We have like the, this W uh, value. <coughs> You're going to use that. W, um, oh, B dot, oh no, actually that's, that's, that, that don't, doesn't quite work. Uh, but yeah, we can, we can make it um, hashtag B dot W. So the number of characters in the width, um, multiplied by four, and then plus one, I think. Because there is like an outline for on, the, on the buttons, right? So let's try that. Yeah, see, this is working. Now let's see. See, um, mm, doesn't quite work. It doesn't quite work. Now I was anticipating this because um, this is because of how the black outline, the black box of our buttons works. Yeah, we're using this using this kind of like background function and the problem is like when we're drawing a, a text, it draws it like here, exactly here. You know, the top left corner of the first character is going to be exactly the position where we're drawing it. But when we draw an outline of that, that outline appears to the left and up, like one pixel to the left and up. So actually the top left edge of the pick of, like visually the top left edge of our um, of our button is, is this one to the left and one up from the actual position. <sighs> I know it is. This is one of those like, ah, so we have to do like minus one, minus one here, I think. Let's try that. Uh, let's find a button here. Okay. So now, yeah, see now it works. Now this works. Let's see if, oh, I can already tell. Uh -huh. So the height is not quite correct. It should be five. You know, I'm doing this very precisely now because later on maybe we're gonna do some weird shenanigans with those buttons, I don't know. So this works now. And then we're gonna see if we can get in our button in here. So we cannot get our button in here. So we have to remove the plus one, I think. So we should be able to get the, the, our cursor between the buttons and not trigger the buttons. Oh, we are triggering the buttons, look at this. The buttons are triggered. Um, Minus one? That, that's a bit odd. That's not what I expected. Yeah, now I can get in there and now I can select it. Okay, good. Good, it's working. Okay, so now our mouse can hover over the buttons, uh, but obviously <clears throat> we want to be able to click on the buttons as well. So let's do that. Right, there's a bit of a problem here. So like this is the, the hovering, that's good. And then, then we're gonna go if LCCLK, right, Le left click, uh, CLKL. If we click on the left, on the, on, the, on the button, then, and then we should execute that button. But we also, that, that's a code that we already have here. 
So maybe we should have this in kind of like the, its own extra function, right? So let, let's do like a function called uh, button press. But, but do but 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 turn. <laughs> Family friendly show. I'm sorry. I, I hope you appreciate how much restraint I'm showing here, okay? Yeah, and then we're gonna do uh, do button this. Right, we're gonna do like a do button this, and then this is gonna be in the do button function uh, for now. And then here, we can now copy this stuff. I'm gonna put it in here, do button, um, yeah, like this, because we're already changing the curex and cur y when we this, do this. Okay, good. And then now we want to adapt this a little bit because it's not quite correct. Um, it's, this is supposed to be B. Otherwise, it's good. So now when I click on this, I should be able to add a new enemy. Bam, I just did. Do you see? Pay attention to the top of the screen. Bam, bam, okay, bam, bam. Okay, so I can use this little, tiny little button to add more enemies. Maybe this button should be bigger. Maybe maybe you should make that button bigger. Let's make that button bigger. Let's go like this. Ooh, that's maybe a, a bit too juicy. I don't know. Uh, do not enjoy that button too much. Let's make it back on. Uh, the problem is I don't want to have too many buttons, so I, I actually want to see the, the actual game, you know? Okay, but no, this works. This is good. Okay, so now let us make it so that we can actually interact with the enemies. That would be good, right? That's something that we want to be doing. Um, so for example here, um, this is where we're spawning the actual, uh, like we're spawning the buttons for the enemies, and so we can come up maybe with some kind of enemy command. Let's call this edit n. Um, and then we can also do a cmdy. I think that was cmdy that we called it. Did we call it cmdy? Yeah, cmdy. So let's let's just reuse that cmdy. It's not necessarily y, but I want to save in the cmdy property of the button. I want to save the number of the enemy that we're dealing with. Can I do this? E. I might not be able to do this. Well, we could save the actual enemy. It's not the number of the enemy, but it's the enemy. I mean, uh, I do not love it, but um, it would be a bit of a pain in the butt to, to find out the number of the enemy. But we can spawn, we can save the actual enemy in there, the actual object, enemy object, we can save that in there. So let's do some kind of interaction with this. Something we can do very easily is we can, uh, uh, when we when we interact with it, and when we are, um, click on this, I want me just like a, as a placeholder. I want to delete the enemy, so we can finally start deleting enemies. So if it's if the command is uh, edit n, is it edit n? Edit n, yeah. Edit n. So if it's edit edit n, then we're gonna go delete sked uh, b dot. Uh, CMDY. For example, comma missing as always. Mm, oh, else if. I, I'm doing the fix so quickly because I always make the same mistakes. It's kind of nice. When you make the same mistakes, you always know what the problem is. <laughs> it doesn't prevent you from making the mistakes, but hey. Uh, okay. So yeah, we can create new enemies. And now when we click on them, we can also delete them. Ooh. And we can do this with a keyboard as well. This is amazing. Okay, so now when we are here, what else can we do with our newfound powers? Well, um, something uh, something we'd also do is, um, how about when we hover over a button, we kind of highlight the enemy? That would be kind of neat, huh? So how about we do that? 
Right. So we when when you want to when you're selecting an enemy, you want to highlight an enemy. Um, maybe we should have like a f variable that is just basically saying highlight, right? So let's let's do that like this. Something like uh, let's call it cell n or cell cell n. Let's just call it cell n equals nil. <clears throat> The problem is not, not necessarily an enemy, it's actually what we're selecting is not an enemy, we're selecting a spawn. So it's maybe cell n is a bit, um, let's call it uh, cell sked, maybe cell sked is, is, is good, that's the schedule that we selected. So um, then when we hover, so here um, we're going to do if menu uh, with the button that we that is currently selected, if that has a cur cmdx, See, I'm kind of like questioning the wisdom of using the CMD Y because it's not necessarily a Y value that we're storing in them. We're storing a schedule. So maybe you should invent a new property, not necessarily an, a Y property, but also like a specific property for the schedule. So something like CMD. Um, so we're going to check if this has a CMD then. And if that's the case, then we're gonna set the cell sked to CMD -sh. Otherwise, the cell sked equals nil. We always want to, if, if the button is not selected, if there's no button selected or the button that we selected doesn't have a cell sked, then I want, uh, or doesn't have a schedule associated with it, then I want to uh, reset that thing so the selection doesn't linger. Um, another thing I want to do is I want, yeah, so now we have the CMD -sh, and I want to actually make sure that we are um, using this when we're deleting an enemy. Let's try that so that it works. Yeah, that works. We can delete enemies. We can create and delete enemies. That's good. Um, all right. So now I want to now highlight an enemy. So when I draw an enemy and the schedule associated with that enemy is the one that is currently highlighted, I want to draw maybe an outline, a box around the enemy. Um, so let's, let's go in a draw function, right? And here is where we're drawing the enemies. Um, so we're going to go if sh uh, if sure equals cell sked, then and we're gonna do a rect fill. Um, we hmm, this is a bit of a problematic thing. Uh, let's do like a rect fill, rect fill sixteen sixteen. Uh, let's make it pink fourteen. Uh, that's going to be a wrong box, but we're going to see. A, I'm going to create a new schedule. That's meaning okay. <laughs> see, it, it <laughs> it's it's not exactly what we wanted, but <laughs> what? oh yeah, because because <sighs> because of how we do rectangles in in, in Pico Eight. I I don't I still don't like the way we do rectangles in in Pico Eight. So let's do minus eight, minus eight. Uh, no, that's wrong. This is completely temporary. Don't, 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 don't look at it too closely. It's fine. Uh, this is not correct. Okay, mm, let's make it plus nine. Again, uh, it's kind of hard coded. The box is hard coded. Later on, when you have enemies with different types of sprites, we might get the box, we might draw a box that is you know custom made for those enemies. Okay, now we you see a box around the enemy that is is currently being selected. So now I know more. I have a better idea of which enemy I'm, I'm currently interacting with. Um, maybe this box should have a similar effect that the uh, mouse has. Um, because when we do drawing the mouse, where where do we do? Are we doing this here? Yeah, there we go. We have like this thing here, uh, this blinking. Let's use this for the box for of the enemy selection as well. 
Um, so do something like this and like this. Right, so now when you create an enemy, see now it's blinking so we can you know exactly which enemy we're selecting. We could also use like a pal statement to color in the enemy. That might be a good idea as well. I'm not exactly sure. For now, I'm gonna leave the box around and maybe we're gonna find a better way of indicating uh, which enemy we're selecting. So, okay, so, so this works, but there is a problem. There's always a problem. <sighs> You see how like this enemy spawns on the top left corner. Now we see which enemy spawns here, right? We see that this is this enemy. Oh, by the way. Oh yeah, we cannot move the, the buttons if, if the if the mouse is <laughs> if, the, if the mouse is hovering over a button, we cannot uh, interact. We might want to fix that in a second. But yeah, for now, um, see how that enemy is spawning like way off screen there and we just barely see it. And you know, if the enemy spawned way off screen, we would just not see the enemy at all. And that's kind of like a core problem that I was, again, I'm repeating this myself again, but um, we have this problem that we're editing things that are not visible on the screen. The things that we're editing, we're creating spawn events that spawn off screen. So we don't get this, you see what you get results that you have, you know, where it's like you create something and it appears on the screen. When we create a spawning event, that thing will spawn off screen. So in order for us to maybe see it, we could like scroll the camera over there and maybe show you the off screen area basically. But that defeats the purpose of actually having a preview of what the game will look like. It's a bit odd. That's why I added this timeline so we can at least know that there's events happening, there's a spawning event happening. It's a bit off screen right now. Maybe we need add, add, want to add additional UI to, to kind of like give us hints of what is happening off screen. Okay, so here's my idea here, right? So this, this little box, that's pretty cool. That's cool, I like it. Um, but I want to maybe indicate also like the spawning location of that enemy at this point. Um, so let me just draw a line at the spawning location, okay? So like here, here, and wh where's the spawning location? Um, see, we have like the sh, um, sh, sh, x and sh, y, but this is not the spawning location. This is something that we calculate, you know, using the scroll value and so forth. This is not necessarily where the sp uh, enemy spawns on the screen. We're gonna grab those, you know, bare bones values and to draw lines on the screen like this and 27 this this is going to be a, like a vertical line oops there we go vertical line and then the horizontal line is going to be using one zero oh not not one three like this let's, let's 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 look at this didn't work <laughs> what what the heck oh 127 uh, and i want to make it white for now aha way better way better so i now i can see that an enemy is spawning up there but you see it's like I, I'm lucky that that enemy is kind of like spawning a little bit on on screen. It's not fully uh, spawning off screen. But if you know if we move enemy way off screen, we won't see. We won't exact. We can't judge how far off screen an enemy has spawned. Right. That's a bit of an issue here. Right. We create here. We, it's really great. We have horizontal vertical line. But if the enemy was off screen, we wouldn't be able to quite be able to see it. Let me let me show you what I mean. Well, let me let me go into this mode. Um, so this is the spawning position. Usually you should be spawning at minus eight, but let's spawn it at 16. Or let's spawn at 32, whatever. Let's go back to map mode. Ooh. Ah, there's some bugs happening. Uh, let's let's go cur y equals one. Let's just reset cur y to one every time we go to map mode. Okay, um, so we have this. Uh, that's not what I want. 
let's run this. Let's go to the table mode. Um, so the enemy at number 15, uh, at scroll value 15, we're gonna set it way off screen, at minus 16, right? Then we're gonna go to map mode. Let's go to 15. So this is this enemy. It's space way off screen. We have no indication of, far off, of how far away off screen it spawns. We just don't know, like where is it off screen, right? We just don't know. Something that might help here is we might also want to add diagonals. So let's try to do that. So we're gonna draw a line I'm gonna spawn it at the center of the enemy and we're gonna go something like this, minus 128, this, hmm, four minus 28, right? So this that's one diagonal and then there's gonna be a second diagonal that's gonna be minus, uh, plus 128. So we're drawing all these diagonal lines and that didn't do anything. <laughs> oh right, yeah, yeah, because we're drawing in upwards, we want to draw them downwards. We want to maybe also add upward facing lines, but for now, you see, now it, we kind of have the, the lines converge at the enemy. It's a bit ugly, but it gives a better idea of where an enemy is spawning. And so now when we go here and here and we edit this and we're gonna set it to minus 16, and the next one we're gonna to set to minus 32, uh, 32. So now you kind of, kind of have an idea of where the lines converge. You have a better idea of where the enemy is spawning. And now you know that exactly this one is spawning, spawning further off screen than this one. This is closer to the, to the top of the edge of the screen. This is further away because you can see the lines being further apart at the at top edge of the screen. That's kind of like my strategy here to do this. Now, I don't like the white lines. They're, I think they, they are a bit of a they're conflicting, I think, with the, um, uh, with the rest uh, of the UI because we're always using white for everything. So we, at some point, we have too much white. Uh, I'm going to actually add the remaining diagonals as well. Uh, we, most of the time, we won't see them, but maybe we're going to see them um, later on. And also I want to, I want to draw those, I want to draw those underneath maybe, underneath the actual sprite. Because I think they are a little bit, a little bit much. So it's, if they're underneath the sprite, I think it's a little better. Let's try that. Yeah, see now, now they're, they're kind of underneath the sprite, it's, it's le less intrusive, but still I want to change the color. Um, so we are going to do like a um, fill pattern. Um, and it's going to be, we don't have to find the correct, maybe like this, no, that's, that's not good. See, this is one of those problems where maybe uh, we have to maybe have separate fill patterns for the different, for the different lines. So let's try, um, this is going to be the, let me, let me check this. By the way, this might be, this might actually work universally. No, it won't. It's always the same thing. Oh, there we go, there we go. Uh, no, I f it was somewhere here. Oh, there we go. It's um, shift Z gives you this pattern. Let's try this. Uh, that's the opposite. We want to have the opposite. See? That's better. We want to turn off the fill P if, we're, if the stuff is finished. P. And otherwise we're good. Right. I also want to maybe change a little bit the <clears throat> the coloring here, so it's not seven, but let's make it. Uh, the one I use is a mixture of green and blue, so it's like eleven. So 
So it's usually green. Right, this really works really well uh, against the blue. It's kind of like unobtrusive. It doesn't like really bite you in the eyes. It's kind of like this, little, this nice little green. But the problem is like when we are here in this area, uh, you don't see anything. In <laughs> A bit of an issue, right? Um, so what we can do here is i um, not sure what the, it's like 128 times, um, no, 16 times 12. Uh, let's go 16 times 12, like this. I think that's the correct color. Let's try that. Nope. Let's put it in our, in here. Hmm. Ah, not quite, because we have to do like um, divided by one here. I think now it will work. Yes, it works. So now it's alternating blue and green. Uh, we did a um, backslash one. Uh, because of the way fill patterns work, if you have a point value in the fill pattern, so it's like fill fill zero 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 one point one, then that means that the fill pattern is supposed to go with a color and transparent. So color transparent, color transparent. So it's kind of like you have this see through fill pattern. In order to make it not see through but solid, you have to make a, you have to basically you have to do a floor. We could also do a floor, I think here. That would also work, um, but uh, the backslash divide by one is also a good a, a, a possible candidate here. Right, floor is is the, how you get the uh, the opaque fill pattern uh, that is alternating between two colors. All right, uh, let me let me do the local call equals. And that is going to be the fill color. And we're gonna paste this color in here. So that, that's kind of like the math, the formula to make it alternate between green and blue. And we're gonna paste that. We're gonna use that for our color. Right. Yeah, so it, this works. And when we create one here, we can exactly see where the enemy is spawning, but it's not too harsh. Not, not, not this crazy white thing. Good. Wow. That was, we're adding a lot of UI elements to this. But now let's move on to the doggy zone. That's right. Dog zone. That's right, the doggy zone. So let us think about the next steps. There's like two next steps that I want to do in the next episode that will allow us to kind of like really edit these things. First of all, it's cool that I'm inter interacting with this thing here. That's that's nice. That's okay. That's okay. But you know what I would love to have? That would be really the thing that would that I would really enjoy. Is if I can click on the enemy and be like, I want to select you. You enemy, where do you spawn? I want you to move you around and stuff like that. And that's just not happening right now. It, we cannot really do this. So we want to have the way we had interactions with the buttons with the mouse here. I want to also have interactions with um, the enemies. I want to be able to hover over an enemy, click on an enemy. And the second challenge is like, think about you know, what happens when you click on an enemy actually. What, what should happen that would give you a wide variety of interactions with the enemy. And maybe also try to implement this. This is gonna be the task for the dog zone. For now, let us move on to the part where I will say a big thank you and a huge shout out to the beautiful people who are supporting this show on coffee.com, making this show possible on coffee. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, coffee.com slash is the address if you want to join in. And also I wanted to highlight another beautiful project. This one is by Loki Striker. So he's been working hard in Discord and also posting updates on, on, on his beautiful shmup. Um, this one is, uh, it, it, at the beginning it looked very, very simple, but recently Lucky Striker added ooh, incredible uh, sprite work. So now it looks like 
really really impressive so this is a good moment to show off this amazing work i really like the color palette happening here this is like really excellent stuff but also lucky striker recently also posted like a comment that i also read out um uh, uses um circular collision detection so actually all the collision detection happening is actually little circles on the on the enemies and whenever an enemy is wide or long it's just two circles next to each other that's i thought was a really smart decision um and something I really want you to pay attention to is the bullets. Have you noticed that the bullets are actually, they have, the, they have, they have like a tail, so you can see which direction the bullet is flow, uh, flying at, so the bullets are kind of like very directional. And the way uh, Loki Striker does that is by drawing a bunch of circles on top of each other. And then there is like one circle that's kind of like behind the bullet, so and it looks like a, like a tail. I think it's a very smart idea. Procedural bullets, basically. Um, and it makes it so much easier to read the direction of the flight of the bullet. I love it so much. I hope we're going to see more of that game. And if you want to follow the development of that game, you can check out the Discord. Yes, we are still in the thick of developing our schedule editor. Some things are becoming more clear now. I think this is a bit of a weird UI, but it's a weird task that we're doing. And we are going to continue doing this on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.